Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this follows on quite nicely, I guess. I'm uh, Dan Dowling from PwC. Um, I run a lot of our risk and resilience work uh, that we do with the public and private sectors. Um, I think what I'm going to try and cover here is how do we make more of this happen? Um, because these examples are powerful um, and they're important, but they are but they are few and far between. And whether they've happened through a planned response or through um, fortuitous circumstances or leadership is a, is a different question. So how can we scale up and do more of this? And this is the, the topic of a piece of work that we've been doing with DFID recently. Um, at PwC, we've been working with clients on resilience for, for many years, particularly in the, with the private sector, and um, look at resilience as a, as a business-wide issue, you know, covering counterterrorism, cyber risk, uh, and other operational risks, as well as natural hazards. Um, so business does understand how to manage risks in many ways. Particularly over the last 10 years, we've then been working with the public sector um, on a range of risk issues, but in particular, disaster risk and climate-related risks, including extreme weather events. Um, and it's, it's, these things have begun to get very close together, but they don't often really get discussed in exactly the same place. Um, and as we realise that the post-2015 agenda is, is, is huge for the private sector and that it will be a major theme as to how the private sector can deliver, scale and transform off the back of uh, post-2015 agreements, we realise this, this, this is a key space where we need to do some really important work and make some really substantial things happen. However, to date, there's, no, there's not been a really clear understanding of how that should work. Um, and that's where Nick and his team at DFID stepped in and asked us to generate some new evidence beyond the existing rationale about um, what the challenges are and how they can be overcome um, with public support in particular. So not to touch on too much of the existing evidence, um, but just to <coughs> reaffirm, I guess, that there is a very good uh, public and private rationale for reducing risk uh, through the private sector. Um, the private sector itself is already exposed to a range of risks and faces a lot of business attrition on an annual basis. So managing that existing and current risk is already a very valid thing to be doing for those businesses. Furthermore, with climate change affecting major natural hazards, there's an improving business case because those risks are getting bigger and globalisation means that those risk, the exposures are becoming broader. So it's very clear that something needs to be done by, by business alone. However, business will not act unless it understands in numbers either what the risk is and are able to value that and quantify it, or what the market opportunity might be for solutions to that risk. That might be new products and services, for example, it can sell into the markets. So it, it, is, it is an improving business, case, but it needs some, some more tangible evidence. Um, our piece of work um, engaged over 100 different um, public and private sector actors. Um, we undertook consultations in four focus countries. They were Bangladesh, Pakistan, Mozambique and Kenya. And we looked at a range of sectors in each country. We engaged with SMEs, national companies and also multinationals with supply chains that extend into those countries. We did field trips, workshops, focus groups, etc., to really try and understand what's, what was underpinning those issues. Um, we produced, you'll be pleased to know, over 400 pages of detailed evidence, which I know that none of you will read in one go, but to be honest, it is a, a very useful resource pack as a whole, because for some of the p specific questions that we have, it, it really dives into those and answers them, or at least tries to. So I'd encourage you to, to engage with our report, which we can circulate um, by email following this, this meeting. Okay, so <clears throat> the key task we needed to do were to look at the existing landscape of public support and try and understand, is it, is it doing enough at the moment or not? Um, and here's a, if you can read this, okay, there's a few of our findings here. I mean, our first finding is very obvious. I mean, we, we didn't think there was enough out there that was effective and supporting businesses engage with the public sector and deliver solutions that uh, bring about societal resilience. The second point is that there are no initiatives that are specifically designed to do that. There are existing private sector development and climate change initiatives that s suddenly decide maybe that they'd like to focus on the private sector and may have some success at doing that. But if you des don't design these things from the beginning to target the private sector, then it's extremely difficult to, to, to get results. Most often you just find that businesses and investors just have no idea it exists. 
So one reason we think that that's not working so far, the existing initiatives are not working, is because they're not focusing. So for a business to engage, you need to get an element of sector focus at the very least and then sometimes country focus as well to get those issues or opportunities visible to a private sector actor. Now that's working okay in agriculture and insurance. We're beginning to see an emerging but small sort of market for agricultural smallholder support programs, <coughs> uh, which you know, in itself is, is, is private sector action. And that's mostly focused on risk reduction at sort of plot <coughs> level. Um, and then insurance schemes are supporting those with sort of um, distributed small scale insurance solutions micro-insurance, et cetera. So we, we can see how that can work at some levels. But other sectors are completely different. The water sector needs an entirely different response, most probably. And this is the issue with risk and resilience, is that it's quite a diverse sort of landscape. So one easy solution, setting up one fund to do one thing, only solves a very small part of the challenge. Um, number five here, I already mentioned, the targeting doesn't work. The marketing and the language behind things is not always what needs to be seen. Um, and finally, and really importantly, the actual support to businesses that have new products and services to help them innovate and commercialise those products and services is almost completely lacking. Um, so if we felt the existing landscape wasn't enormously um, supportive or well-developed, then could we learn from somewhere else? So we looked at other private sector development initiatives that work on different thematic areas, but really to address similar challenges albeit resilience will always have its curiosities, I guess. Um, and just really quickly, here's some of the things we learned, and I'll just read them out. Um, it's worth enabling partnerships as well as just targeting the supporting individual projects, because those partnerships are sustainable by their very nature. Um, we mentioned already focusing at, at sector and country level, or some combination of that's really important so that the offer is clear. Thirdly, involve the business in the design. So if you want to do a, a, a support program to the construction sector in Pakistan, engage with that sector, don't decide what they might need, because you'll learn a lot through that engagement. Um, fourth there, I mean, focus on shared, shared priorities between the public and private sector, that way you can best leverage local government as well as the business itself. Um, second last, change the language, um, it really doesn't mean anything to most businesses, the way we often speak to them about this stuff, and we really need to change that quickly, it should be an easy win. Um, and finally, and I know it's difficult sometimes when dealing with taxpayers' money, but we need to be as flexible as possible when we're working with those businesses to allow different solutions to emerge. And that's why I think collaboration is so important. Now, <clears throat> bringing all the evidence together, we thought there was four areas in which action needed to take place. We consider this a, a framework for action. Um, all of these things do probably need to happen. <coughs> but they don't all need to be supported at the same time through the same instrument or intervention. Um, I just want to consider each in turn and focus on two of them. Now, the first part is A, which is um, improve the national enabling environment. Now, there are existing initiatives such as CDKN and um, GFDRR and UNISDR who work with governments on policy making and can evolve that support to focus on the private sector in more detail. So if we're looking for an opportunity to intervene with limited resources, maybe part A is covered. Jumping to part D, um, working with investors in infrastructure sectors, there's a lot of work to do there, but we've got the Green Climate Fund coming along, um, and we've got other investor coalitions, voluntary coalitions between investors to tackle those issues, to de-risk investment, to create new products such as bond structures that deliberately target resilience interventions. So let's argue that there is some um, momentum there as well. So I want to focus on B and C. Um, now, the management of operational risk, as we described earlier, is a major priority for businesses themselves. And when those businesses are located within communities that are at risk, they can work together and help one another at that location to build overall resilience of the society and the economic footprint. Um, we, we couldn't find anything out there at the moment that is providing any substantial support or even any tools and ideas to help businesses manage that risk and work with the public sector to do so. It's really very limited when you get to a granular level. Then part C um, of the framework here. This is about supporting those and developing those new opportunities, products and services. And again, we see some examples, and I'm thinking of CEDA's Innovations Against Poverty and DFID's Business Innovation Facility, where 
uh, smaller startup businesses, innovation, research, business model development, those sorts of important enablers are being supported. But what you find when you see a company who's got a great idea and wants to commercialize it is that they can find a little bit of support for certain steps in the progression. What they can never find is a continuous support that takes them from a new a market issue, even just identifying as an opportunity, through to supporting the research, then developing a business model, piloting and demonstrating it at market level, and then actually commercializing it and attracting finance to, to, to grow. Getting all, all of those things have to be in place, and it's hard enough in the UK environment to support small businesses. We don't do a very good job of it, unfortunately, uh, when we're dealing with resilience at all. I'm just going to flick past some of those points. So part A, there's institutions already in place. Part D, there's a lot of effort, at least pending. Um, we need to focus on B and C, so I get ahead of myself there. Um, and this is a, so part B, so back to the operational risk piece. We developed a quick framework here which sort of pulls together a lot of the issues a business needs to grapple with. So we need to design something that actually supports activities in terms of understanding and responding to ris risk at organisational level, and particularly focusing at the balance between owned and shared risks. So I was just talking to these different intervention points with regards to the commercialisation cycle, and, and this is our little model at the moment, and you can pick this up in the report and have a, a look at what the real business needs are at each level, and examples of organisations who have got stuck quite often at a particular level. So my final point is just to introduce some, some options as to how to deliver support to tackle some of those areas, B and C, the operational risk and the commercialization. And I'll just finish by setting out these, these three potential options. Option one is to mainstream support for these types of activities, try and embed risk awareness, new knowledge products and uh, risk information into existing programs of support to the private sector. That would require the upskilling and augmentation of a wide range, quite possibly, of, of programs, funds and activities. Um, it certainly could be done. And in, if you like, there's no reason not to do that anyway. I think that's an important part of the solution. The second option is to target B and C, if you like, those two areas where the gaps are largest, and pick some countries and sectors where you really think you could get some traction and try and demonstrate this and really show the value of making a, a separate intervention that has its own brand um, and that a business can see is targeted at them. By doing that, we would change the language, address the marketing, etc. You could link that to existing knowledge platforms. It can be integrated into existing landscape. But there's a question of do you want something new or not? Thirdly, there's a kind of whole hog approach, I guess, that says, okay, actually, this, this issue is really important. There's the whole framework um, is, a, is a sets of issues that need to be tackled. And actually, resilience needs to have its time and its own space um, and its own brand to put it right up there on the agenda. And we need a big international collaboration and public-private partnerships to make that work. So let's together work on a big international facility that focuses on multiple sectors in multiple countries um, and, and makes a really big splash of it. There's major barriers to doing that in particular, but it depends really on the political will and the ability to collaborate to make it happen. So I think all three are valid. I think they'd be great topics for discussion, and uh, I'll finish there. Thank you very much, Dan.